The Corsair Void Pro headset features comfortable microfiber, mesh fabric, and memory foam ear cups, custom-tuned 50mm neodymium drivers with Dolby Headphone 7.1 surround support, and a unidirectional noise-canceling microphone with LED mute indicator. Available in RGB and wireless trim too, so click the link in the description for more information. Excellent! What's up guys, how's it going? Welcome to Paul's Hardware. Today's video is a follow-up to this build video, which I just recently posted, so check that out if you didn't see me assemble this system. It is a small but powerful gaming and multi-purpose, gaming and streaming, gaming and workstation, mini ITX system that is also portable with the handle on top and can fit and carry on luggage to be taken on the go. I have a very limited amount of time to test this because I'm actually gonna be delivering it to my good friend Rachel, who's gonna be taking it away on a fantastic trip overseas. Maybe she'll maybe she'll vlog it or something for you guys. But in the meantime, I'm gonna make sure Windows is, is installed and set up and good to go. And also hopefully do some basic tests here to check out the thermals as well as maybe a little bit of performance. So my first step was to update the BIOS. It shipped with version F3. I updated that to F5, and then I went into the BIOS and set the XMP profile for the memory, which is DDR4-3000. It was actually running at 2933 because that is the divider that's available with Ryzen. Next, I attempted a modest overclock. I initially aimed for about 3.8 gigahertz because that's pretty reasonable to overclock to on most Ryzen CPUs. However, it is a small form factor system which, with a pretty small cooler. So uh, encountered instability, dialed it back to 3.75 gigahertz and then 3.7 gigahertz. 3.7 seemed pretty stable at first, but it actually failed under the stress test with the temperature getting up above 83 degrees Celsius and still climbing. So from there, I switched to stock, which is 3.2 gigahertz base frequency and 3.6 gigahertz turbo frequency on the Ryzen 5 1600. Uh, and with XFR extended frequency range, if temperatures are okay, it can hit 3.7 gigahertz on one or two cores. And actually in my testing, I was hitting about 3.73 gigahertz max on a single core or even a couple cores at the same time. So that's pretty nice and no need to actually overclock it there. So I feel like with the thermal solution I have in this system, the stock frequency that the R5 1600 ships at is pretty much where you wanna be. Uh, from there, I tested the IDA64 stress test. Uh, temperatures climbed pretty steadily, as you can maybe see from the chart, and I actually peaked at just under 90 degrees Celsius after about 15 minutes of that burn test. Now, bear in mind, it was pretty warm in the garage, about 84 degrees Fahrenheit, or 29 degrees Celsius was the ambient. Um, I know it's still warm here in Southern California, but it is getting towards fall. But um, I suspect that the culprit actually for those high temperatures when it comes to the CPU is the lack of airflow. There's these uh, side panels that have a mesh screen in front of them that's intended to provide a dust filter, but it doesn't actually provide much active airflow through them since there's no fan that's up against those dust filters to pull air through. So it's blocking air rather than allowing it in. And since there's no other active fans on the outside of the case pulling cool air in, temperatures just get warmer and warmer and uh, actually peak pretty warm. So I actually removed the side panel dust filter and immediately saw the temperatures start to drop. It went from 89 degrees or so down to 84 and it was still dropping after a few minutes. Again, I was really limited on testing time, so I'm sorry I didn't go much further beyond that. But if temperatures are a problem and you're building in this case, highly recommended to just remove the dust filters from the side panel. It allows a lot more airflow through. If I did have this case and I wanted to use a little bit more and possibly test some solutions, I might consider something like a 120 millimeter slim fan and actually mounting that somehow directly to the side panel to provide some active airflow being pulled in through that dust filter. That could be a way to actually get the use of the dust filters and the temperatures without having to choose one or the other. When it comes to temperatures though, again, the CPU was hitting about 45 degrees Celsius at idle, and this is with those dust filters on. And then when stress testing again, just shy of 90 degrees, 89.9 was actually what it hits. As for the little Zotac GTX 1070 mini graphics card, it was running at 60 degrees Celsius at idle, but that is with zero fan mode enabled. So when the graphics card isn't doing anything and it's not too hot, fans don't spin. So that's pretty normal as far as an idle temp. This is testing done with the side filters on, by the way. And then I did a Unigine Valley 15 minute loop uh, and the GPU got up to 83 degrees Celsius max and it was hitting about 82% fan speed, which is about 3,050 RPM. So not the quietest experience, but it was able to keep the GPU cool enough and the GPU clock speed wasn't falling off too much. It was fluctuating between about 1770 and 1820 megahertz. 
I did notice um, that when I removed the side panel dust filter from the GPU side, that the clock speed stabilized at just over 1820. So you can get a little bit more performance out of the GPU with a little bit better airflow, but the fall off really wasn't too bad. It's only a matter of about 50 megahertz or so. Uh, during the GPU stress test, the CPU hit a max temp of 77 degrees Celsius, which is a little warm, but it was running at about 2 point, I'm sorry, 3.65 gigahertz on two cores, which is a pretty nice uh, speed when it comes to CPU gaming frequency. Now, I did do one final test because I wanted to simulate gaming and streaming at the same time because that's kind of the argument for going with a six core Ryzen processor for gaming specifically. You can get a little bit better performance when it comes to gaming out of your graphics cards, of course, depending on the situation and the resolution in the game, but you can get a little bit more out of your graphics card with a four core Intel processor like a 7700K, which has better IPC performance. However, if you're gonna go with a six core Ryzen and you're considering gaming and streaming at the same time, that has been objectively shown to have better performance, a smoother experience, not just for gaming, but also for the uh, stream that is output. And uh, Gamers Nexus actually did a great test on that uh, just recently, so I'll post a link to that in the comments. But again, this final test was kind of simulated because I was on a time crunch, but I was running Unigine Valley, uh, that was my game, and then I was using OBS to capture Unigine Valley and then write it locally to the disk. So rather than doing the encoding and spitting that stream out over the internet, I was doing the encoding on the CPU and then spitting that stream out to the disk, which is roughly the same and uh, that shouldn't be too much different when it comes to actual performance. And in this test, I saw sort of an expected combination of the results from the CPU stress test and the gaming test, which was that the CPU is running warm, but not terribly warm. It wasn't throttling. It was running at about 3.4 gigahertz. The GPU frequency was hitting the same frequency that I did in just the strict gaming tests. So that was okay as well. Temperatures were about 82 degrees when it comes to the GPU. And then when I pulled off the dust panel on the side, they dropped and uh, got down to 77 and even started falling off a little bit more than that on the GPU. And then CPU temperatures were right around the 80 degrees mark, so we weren't seeing any aggressive throttling from that by hitting, say, more, more towards 90 degrees. So overall, it's running a little bit warm, and I would also say it's a little bit noisy, but that's because, again, there's minimal fans keeping everything cool in here, and there's minimal space or side panels or anything like that keeping the noise from reaching your ears. So here is a quick sound test. Now the dust filters are out. And that sound test, by the way, was run while I was doing the gaming and streaming test. So a uh, pretty heavy load situation, but also something that you might be expected to hit rather than just uh, running some simulated tests on there. So with those tests run and completely out of time, I had to hit the road because uh, we had a meeting set up. Actually, it was Wifey Sauce's birthday last week. So everyone go and uh, say happy birthday to Wifey Sauce, belated birthday. And we were doing a little get together uh, to meet up and celebrate that. So I wanted to bring the computer along so I could hand it off because Rachel was going to be there as well. So uh, on the shores of the Pacific Ocean, uh, we met and uh, it was very dramatic. I was able to hand it off to her and she was super happy about it. Uh, and it's always nice when I build a computer to be able to directly hand it to someone and say, here you go, go and do the computer things that people do with computers and, and make make wonderful content or play video games or have fun, whatever, whatever the case may be. But anyway, guys, that is all for this video. I know it's been a little bit shorter and a little bit different when it comes to my follow-up testing videos, but I think with this particular build, the focus was a little bit more on what the performance was gonna be when it comes to temperatures, as well as noise output, which I tried to cover. Um, if you're looking for gaming performance, it's pretty much gonna perform like a Ryzen 5 1600 with a GTX 1070 uh, without too much of an overclock going on. But anyway, thank you so much again for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up button. I have links to all of the uh, parts that I use in this video's description. 
Check out the build video of me putting this all together if you missed it. I got more videos coming up very soon, so don't forget to subscribe too on your way out. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.